Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Hello, this is uh, Pastor Walter Martinez. Uh, thank you uh, for joining our live stream. Uh, today we're going to be uh, revisiting the concept of renewing or reconditioning the mind. Uh, and uh, I taught on this last week, I believe. So I just want to hit our uh, our text scriptures. We found in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed. Uh, the idea of be not conformed, as we mentioned in the uh, to some degree, anyways, it, last week was uh, to not be disguised uh, in a world suit is what we were talking about. Uh, that, the, that the word conform means to, to disguise yourself as something that you're not. Uh, and be transformed is the idea of uh, being changed inwardly. Uh, it's where we get the Greek word metamorphosis. And uh, it's the idea of that is a is a butterfly uh, changing within its cocoon. It goes. It uh, it starts off as a caterpillar, and some might say it's even an ugly caterpillar. But then it go. It makes this transformation into a beautiful butterfly, and that's what the apostle Paul is saying here: be not conformed into this world, but be transformed, be changed. And it says this is done by the renewing of your mind. Or by the reconditioning of your mind is, is the concept here, or at least one of the concepts here. Uh, the uh, uh, Passion Translation says it like this, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Ghost through a total uh, ref reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. Um, I want to start with uh, I want to start with the concept of uh, the same concept of developing the mind and the spirit of the believer. Um, when it comes to renewing your mind, there's a there's not only a, uh, a, uh, a transformation of the mind, it's also a developing of the mind. Uh, but at the same time, the word is so powerful that at the same time your mind is being renewed, your spirit is also developing, uh, going through that process uh, of becoming more and more mature and understanding really what the will uh, of God is. Um, what is permissible, what is allowable, and what is the perfect will of God. There are different stages, and they're all, they're all, I suppose, acceptable, but there's the goal that we should be reaching is the perfect will of God, of course, which is found in that concept of reaching a place of full development. Um, so let me start off with uh, uh, first... Second Peter chapter one, verses twenty and twenty-one. Now, the, one of the first things that we want to know, or that we should know, is the scripture. The scriptures found in the Bible were given to us by divine revelation or inspiration that proceed from the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. uh, in Second Peter chapter one, verse twenty and twenty-one, let me read that portion of scripture. And I'm reading out of the King James. It says, "Knowing this first." that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. Notice how it reads. No prophecy of the scriptures, meaning that um, what the Old Testament prophets uh, uh, prophesied uh, became scripture. It became the word of God. The things that the Old Testament believers as well as the New Testament believers study and examine so that we might know the will of God. Um, 
uh, so let me let me just go on there. Um, uh, uh, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is is, is of any in private interpretation. Is in, is of any private interpretation. That means anyone that is born again uh, can be given the interpretation of the scriptures it, uh, when they learn how to. Um, how can I say this? Practice um, proper uh, uh, interpretation methods. There's certain things that we we look at to be able to interpret the scripture correctly. Like when we look at history, that helps us. The history in which the scriptures was written, uh, who the author was writing to, uh, what was their condition, what was the things that they were facing, uh, and uh, and there's more to that, but base, and then basically the, the final one, the one that I like the best, is let Scripture interpret Scripture. Uh, and we're not going to teach along that line right now, but those are just the simple, basic uh, principles of Bible interpretation. Um, verse 21 says, For the prophecy came not in old time. Now we're talking about the prophecy that would became Scripture. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke or spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Greek word for prophecy here is a word that first means interpreting the divine will and purpose of God. Interpreting the divine will and purpose of God. In other words, God spoke uh, to these men through divine inspiration and out of them came uh, the uh, 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 divine will and purpose of God, which includes, uh, but is not limited to, but includes uh, the future, um, uh, the past, and the present. Uh, someone who is speaking under divine influence, that's another concept of this word prophecy, someone that is speaking uh, under divine influence or a divine utterance or inspired words influenced by the Holy Ghost. So these are things that the Spirit of God uses, or let me say this, these are things that the Spirit of God speaks through the believer, through divine inspiration. The word moved there in that portion of Scripture, let me read that to you again. Um, if I can find that again. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Uh, let's see, where was I? Uh, the word moved there in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, or 21 says, For the prophecy came not uh, in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the word moved there is a Greek word that means to be carried or driven. Uh, it, was, it was first used uh, of the wind bearing or moving a ship uh, by the wind, by wind uh, in, in open water or the sea or something along those lines. So if you can get a picture of that, the Holy Spirit moved through the believer and uh, move the words that were being spoken by the believer by divine inspiration. They came out of the believer. These are, this is not something that the believer had any forethought to or, or anything like that. They just came up by divine inspiration. Um, that's important for us to know. Now, now we say this because we, wanna, we want you to understand the importance of the Word of God. It is extremely important when it comes to um, empowering the believer, when it comes to renewing the mind, when it comes to developing the, the believer's spirit. But because we're teaching on uh, the, the renewing of the mind or the reconditioning of the mind, you have to understand that the mind is being reconditioned every time you get into the scriptures. Now, let me say this, because this is very important. You can read a scripture once in a while, and that's not going to do it, because you lose sight of that scripture. What you need to do is you need to 
read the Word of God continuously along a certain line. I'm not saying every minute of the day, but I'm saying frequent enough that it causes you to begin to meditate on that Word and, and more importantly, shift your thinking to side with the Word of God and agree with the Word of God uh, more than what your circumstances are suggesting to you, more than what your feelings are suggesting to you. Uh, uh, caused by what you're seeing and what you're experiencing on the uh, outwardly. Uh, so let me go to another portion of scripture that kind of backs this concept of uh, co this concept of the importance of the Word of God and uh, the role that the Word of God plays in reconditioning your mind to the to the whole to Holy Scripture. First uh, Peter chapter one verses two uh, and and through four. Now, now understand. We just read First Peter chapter one verses twenty through twenty-one, which is the last two verses in that chapter, chapter one, First Peter chapter one verses that we're going to be looking at. We're we'll looking at the beginning and the end, so that we can capture the context of what is found here in First Corinthians. I mean, in First Peter chapter one verses two through four. It says, um, "Elect." according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience, um, and uh, is that the, that's the wrong scripture. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Let me take you to my Bible. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank God for Bibles. Amen. Second uh, Peter chapter 1. I must have written it down wrong, I guess. Um, Thank you, Jesus. Second Peter, chapter one. Second Peter, chapter one. I'm going to start with verse uh, two. It says, "Grace and peace be multiplied unto unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord." The original Greek just says, "Through the knowledge of God and our Savior," which we know is Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, uh, and, um, so, but I want you to notice something. Uh, notice that the multiplication of grace and peace takes place through the knowledge of God and through Jesus Christ our Lord or through, through our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's important. The knowledge of God is what multiplies grace and peace in our lives. Why is that so important? Because because the Bible says, for by uh, grace are we saved through faith. Amen. For by grace are we saved through faith. That means grace travels through faith. God's unmerited favor and ability travels through faith. Amen. That's what allows you to do uh, and influences you to do everything that God expects you to do. Amen. Now, at the same time, you have the self-nature uh, pulling on the will of God in your life. So you have to be very, very careful of that. Because the, the self-nature is just, is, well, it's just lazy. It just doesn't, see, when you don't jump on things right away, your flesh tends to want to procrastinate. Procrastinate is the biggest enemy of sanctification that there is. Without sanctification, you will not form the type of relationship with the Word and with the Spirit that you need to become extremely uh, victorious in, in every situation. There's a, the whole means of the Bible is to, is to get you to form a relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. It's that relationship that empowers you. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry to say, or it is unpleasant to say, that most Christians don't have that relationship. Their lives are consumed with everyday things. But yet, whenever time something goes wrong, they want to run to the Lord. And then they wonder, uh, why can't anything doesn't work? Why doesn't anything work for me? Well, it's because 
<laughs> uh, it's because you procrastinate too much. You might be really good at taking care of your own personal things, but uh, uh, if you don't give God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit the time that is needed to develop a relationship with them, then of course, uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry to have to report, you're going to have troubles. Uh, life isn't supposed to be that way. You can do. You can. You can have a relationship with God, and you can have a relationship uh, with people in your lives, and you can also tend to the thing, the affairs of life, and still be very successful. Why is our minds wrapped around this concept that we can only do one thing good, and that's it? That's crazy. So. While we procrastinate in certain areas, uh, those are the areas that generally get us. Uh, I don't want to. I've been thinking a lot about the uh, uh, about the uh, uh, old. Or, uh, historically, I've been thinking a lot about these great men and women of God that God used so mightily in some of their practices, and I, I and it's just uh, it's blowing me away of the revel in the revelation that they walked in and one might be able to say well you know they didn't have uh, all the stuff that we have today we have all this entertainment we have the internet everything yeah but why do you have to give that stuff so much time the only thing that's changing is you're flowing with a culture that is feeding your flesh more than you taking the time to develop in the Word of God. Again, why do I say this? Because your mind has to be reconditioned on a continual basis. Your mind can become one of the biggest things that the devil uses against, uh, against you to defeat you. It's your mind that says, I'll do it later. One of the things... <laughs> Well, maybe I shouldn't say it like this, but well, it's like this. You know that trash day comes out on a certain day. Why is it you you uh, are not lazy about taking out the trash? Because you wouldn't be able to handle the smell if you didn't. Well, your flesh smells too. <laughs> Sorry to have to report to you. <laughs> So, I'll let you think about that a little bit. I'll get back to the teaching, glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, again, the Word of God is so powerful that it, is not that it not only develops our spirit man or our inward man, but it reconditions the disposition of our mind, which is a person's inherent qualities of thinking that has to change. The Word of God is so powerful that it not only develops our spirit, but it reconditions the disposition of our mind. We have to remember that. Uh, these verses in 1 Peter chapter uh, uh, 1, or uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, um, that we are starting to examine, in context, tie the knowledge of God and of our Savior coming from the Holy Ghost to Holy Scripture, the Holy Scripture that is mentioned in uh, 1 Peter chapter uh, 1, verses 20 and 21. Remember we read those scriptures already and we talked about the divine inspiration of, of Holy Scripture and how it came. Can you see the correlation in context? If you take these verses, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 2-4, through 4, and then add them to, or at least translate them in light of uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter, 20, chapter 1, verses 1-21, can you see how the first 
part of the scripture starts off by talking about the knowledge that grace and mercy is multiplied through knowledge. It's the knowledge it's talking about is the knowledge that comes through the scripture. We see that in verses 20 and 21. There's no doubt. It, now, again, this is one of those rules of Bible interpretation, which I didn't mention earlier, but uh, the context. Scriptures before, scriptures after. These are very important for us to understand. Um, <laughs> I'm running out of time because I kind of wasted my time on talking about other things. I apologize. First, <laughs> Second Timothy chapter three verses eighteen, chapter three verse eighteen, has to do with self-image, how you see yourself, how you feel, and think about yourself. So let's go to First or Second Timothy, Second Corinthians, chapter seventeen and verse eighteen. 17 and 18. It says, and Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Verse 18. But we are, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. This is such a powerful concept. Because, uh, but we are with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. So it, the, the word glass here is metaphorically being used of, of a mirror. And with open face just simply means that we are opening the Bible and we're seeing the glory of the Lord in the scriptures. And when we see the glory of the Lord in the scriptures, we see a transformation taking place in ourselves. Amen. Glory be. Because it says we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. That's important. As we see the Lord in the scriptures, what he has done for you, what he has given you, what he's allowed, what he's empowered you to do, the authority you walk in, the anointing that you walk in, uh, radiates from him. As you see that, you're being changed into the same image of the Lord. You're becoming just like him. You're looking more and more like him every time you open up the scriptures. Now I'm talking about looking into the scriptures on a continual basis. Mm -hmm. And, well, I should say the scripture is referring to when you go into the grammar and the Greek words, they're talking about looking into the word of God or opening up the word of God continuously and seeing the glory of the Lord, which is changing your image of who you are. God is so good. Because notice what it says. But we are with open face. Beholding is in a glass, looking into a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same what? Image. From glory to glory. From glory to glory means progressively, means continuously. It means every time you open up your Bible and you start looking. When you open up your Bible and you start looking, are you seeing God in the scriptures? Are you seeing what he's made you? what he's given you, what he's empowered you to see. Do you see that you're more than an overcomer? Do you see that? Because it, once you start seeing yourself as an overcomer or even uh, as more than an overcomer, that does something to your mind, your emotions, your soul. It does something to the way you feel, the way you think. <laughs> what else can I say? to convince you that it changes you. And so it changes your attitude, it changes the way you think, the way you feel, it makes you more confident, more bold, and I'm not saying arrogant, I'm saying more bold. I know that I, so that you can say, I know that I know that I'm healed by his stripes in Jesus' name. Why? Because you see a healing taking place every time you open up the scriptures and you read scriptures that, that promise you uh, healing that promises you divine healing that promises you prosperity can you see what I'm saying 
Isn't God good? When you look into the scriptures and see no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And any uh, words that are that are spoken against you in judgment, they shall be condemned. In other words, they shall not bear fruit in your life. Can you see that? Because if you can see that, then you're going to act like that. You're going to be that confident. It, because it's going to change the way you feel. It's going to change your confidence level. It's going to change everything about you. Amen. No more are you going to sit around and let the flesh dominate you. And no more are you going to be lazy, but you're going to get up and do something about your life. And if that means going back to school, then you're going back to school every day, motivated by the promises of God, knowing that God is with you, that God will make you victorious. What are you seeking? Are you seeking a better life? Are you seeking diplomas that are, are promising you a better life? Well, we know that that's God that does that anyways. But what are you seeking? Because you can rest assured that if you do, if you can see yourself in the scriptures, you're going to obtain what God said you can obtain. But you've got to put forth the effort by faith. God is so good, isn't he? The word change uh, in the Greek is the same Greek word uh, transfigured uh, in Romans chapter uh, chapter 12 verse 2. Uh, when you continuously look into the word of God, you will begin to see yourself as you really are. So, ask yourself, how do I see myself? How do I feel? How do I think? Do I feel inferior? Do I feel like I can't do it? Do I feel like I'm not up to the task? Or do I feel superior to the situation that I'm facing, to the problems that are challenging me? Do I see myself superior to them? Is this nothing to me? Because it's nothing to God? How do you see yourself? Or when you run into a situation that, that you didn't expect, do you go, ah, oh, not again? No. Someone that's an overcomer doesn't think like that. Someone that's an overcomer going, you too will go down. You're no different than the, my past experience. You too will fail, and I will prevail once again. Because you're an overcomer. An overcomer thinks like an overcomer. An overcomer laughs in the face of, of, uh, of pressure. Laughs in the face of challenges. Laughs in the face of attacks. That's an overcomer. You, you're kidding me, right? You really think you can take me? You can't. Because I've been empowered by the Holy Ghost. Can you see the mindset behind uh, what the Word of God promises to do? God is so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, <laughs> uh, look at, let's look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 5. It says, Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth on Jesus, the Son of God. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. How simple is that? You want to be an overcomer? Then simply acknowledge that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what makes you an overcomer. Not your own ability, not your own strength, not your possessions, not what you have, what He has. But he's given you. He's the one that makes you an overcomer. He's the one, like the prophets of old, that goes before you and fights the battles. He's the one that, he's the, he's the God that went before Jehoshaphat and slaughtered three different uh, nations that were being represented there. Slaughtered them all uh, and left all the finances on the ground for the children of Israel to come and pick up and gather. More than what they could carry. It was the Lord God Almighty that went before them. It's the same God that will go before you and give you the victory. But you've got to be able to believe it. 
But if your mind is constantly working against you, then there's a good chance you're going to start siding with your mind, lay down, give up, be lazy, procrastinate, and not attend to business. Hallelujah, glory be to God. You've got to do something about your situation. You've got to be stronger than what you think you are because you walk in his strength and his ability. Please tell me you understand what I'm saying. God is so good. The Greek word for overcome uh, means to gain the victory. It was used in two different areas. In the, in the, uh, in the Olympic type sports, arena type of sports, uh, uh, and it was also used in battle. So uh, to gain a victory in a contest or in a battle, it means to conquer, to prevail. Um, in Romans, however, in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, it, the scripture says that you are more than an overcomer. Romans 8, 37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than a conqueror through him that loved us. The word conqueror is the same word for overcomer, except for one slight thing. It has this, uh, it has this smaller word in front of the word uh, uh, overcomer, which they translated conqueror. Uh, uh, it's a compound word. And the, first, the first word means uh, above, over, and second, uh, and it's in the, it's important. Well, maybe you don't even need to know this, but I'll just say it. it's an accusative. It's an accusative case, meaning that uh, it means that it, it carries the idea of being superior now because it's an accusative case. Um, in the accusative case, it means to be superior, to be more than is needed. Uh, uh, then, when it's added to Another word, that, uh, the word uh, overcomer, uh, it, means, it means to be overwhelmingly, uh, means to overwhelmingly prevail or to have an overwhelming, to overcome over, in an over, overwhelming sense, prevailing force against the adversary. Uh, this is who you are. You are more than a conqueror. That means uh, that... The, the things that face you are, have, uh, there's no contest. They are outnumbered. They are defeated even before they get into the battle. They shiver in fear when they face you. That's the concept behind being an overcomer. You are an overcomer and you're also a conqueror. You're more than an overcomer. Amen. That's who you are. Do you see that when you open up the scriptures? Do you see that by his stripes you are healed? Do you see that he is going to pay all your bills? Do you see that? Do you see that he's going to give you more than enough money than you need to pay your bills so that you can enjoy life? Do you see that? If you can't see that, then get back in the scriptures until you can. God is so good. The problem is, is you're overwhelming your soul with your problems and everyday life and not with the scriptures. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory be to God. Do you not understand that you have been given authority over all these forces that come against you? that you are more than an overcomer. Take time to open up the scriptures and let the glory of God reflect on you and change you into another person, no longer dominated by the self-nature, no longer enslaved to the consequences of sin, no longer enslaved to poverty. Quit talking like you're defeated. Quit saying you can't 
and most importantly quit feeling like you can't believe the Word of God the Word of God will change you the Word of God is so powerful and it was given to us to change our lives so be changed in the Word of God. Change the way you think. Allow the Word of God to recondition your thought life. Uh, the way you think. Form different habits, habits in the way you think. Allow the Word of God to bring you into full maturity spiritually. Uh, and become mature in the way you view life. And be bold. That is, be confident. And gain the victory. Because that's what you're called to. God bless all of you. Love you. Appreciate you. And thank you for hanging out with me for this, for this uh, short amount of time. God bless. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.com dot breeze chms dot com forward slash give forward slash online you can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848 if you have a testimony of how the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you please send us a message on one of our social media platforms we would love to hear from you thank you for your continued support of the work here at redeemed christian fellowship